gentlemen, meet Mr. Turing. We were to work together then. We were going to break an unbreakable Nazi code and win the war. Oh. Hi everyone, this is Gordon Bonus with Daily Extra, and I'm sitting here with Benedict Cumberbatch, the star of The Imitation Game. Thanks so much for Hi, speaking Gordon. with me. Gordon, my pleasure. Nice to meet you. The Imitation Game is a fantastic biopic uh, about Alan Turing, who is a cauldron of contradictions, mm. not least of which he is a genius at breaking codes, but he's very inept at some of the basic social codes, at basic communication. Mm. What's a key for you to get into that character? Uh, I think understanding that everything he he experienced and everything that colors his character and the way you described it, it was, was conditions, you know, this was stuff that was born out of his experience of life. Um, he had a stammer, so he was, I think, uh, always uh, nervous about communication. Um, that stammer, I think, was born out of the fact that his, his parents put him up for foster parenting whilst they were away in the diplomatic from his birth until the age of four. So they returned home to someone who'd been looked after by strangers who had a stammer suddenly, you know. And when you look at it like that and realize also that he was a gay man living in a time of great intolerance and when he had his first sort of flush of love at school at age 16, uh, that love was taken away from him, unreciprocated as well. I mean, there was a great friendship and bond and love of sorts, but this boy, Christopher Morecambe, he was completely besotted by and was taken from him by uh, bovine tuberculosis, this horrendous disease which was prevalent then because of unpasteurized milk of all things, you know, something we can't really think of now. In that moment he lost the one person that he felt confident talking to who didn't bully him because of his stammer. I mean he was a very repressed and bullied human being all the way through his life. I think what we see in the film is a man who seems to be socially inept, like you say, and it's sometimes comic, sometimes it's unintentional, sometimes it's seemingly in intentional. He doesn't want to work with people because it would just it would disrupt him, and that seems to be a very selfish way of doing things. But if you think about the fact that he's never been allowed into any group, he's never been considered an equal or understood as someone who's worthy, never been validated, never been allowed to truly be himself, it's no wonder that the man was um, seen as being different or an outsider and had to, you know, seek refuge in that at times. You've got more secrets than the best of them. What if I don't fancy her in that way? Can't tell anyone, Owen. It's illegal. I'm just a mathematician. Sometimes it is the people who no one imagines anything of who do the things that no one can imagine. Without people like this, we wouldn't be where we are. We need these game changers. We need people who are non-conformists, who are quiet heroes, who can, as he did, suffer the indignities of, of being ostracized to, to create something extraordinary, which he really did, both with computing and with code breaking at Bletchley Park with his team. And, and afterwards as well with his work on artificial intelligence and uh, even in the throes of being punished for his sexuality with the supposed cure of oestrogen injections, chemical castration for two years with oestrogen injections to hundreds of thousands of men in that time, he managed to work that into some understanding of science, m um, morphogenesis, the study of the mutation of cells because that's what was happening in his own body. I mean, he was remarkable. So I, I take slight issue with the idea that he was, that he sort of, because he was different, sort of snuck, snuck away into his corner and sort of beavered away. It's a little more subtle than that. And, and I think that's the hook that will make people understand, love and respect him, is that he's, he's as normal as any of us. As a Briton, how do you face up to the, 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 the scale of that betrayal? Uh, yeah, it's, it's shaming, and you know the fact that we've had uh, you know two cultural institutions, our, our government and our and our sovereignty, you know, just uh, our queen rather, just um, our sovereign, um, uh, offer a, a, a public apology um, is is apt. It's, it should happen. It should have happened years ago, um, but it's uh, it's a drop in the ocean. It, the one good thing about it is it brought him to the public attention again. You know, ahead of our film, which will hopefully do the same thing, so his legacy actually lives on. Um, you know, at, at the forefront of people's understanding of, of that era, as well as his achievements. Because, for me, the only person that should be offering any kind of um, forgiveness, for want of a better word, is him, and he can't. Um, he had to endure it, and he committed suicide because of what it did to him. And we lost a hero. Um, and it's a, it's, a very, it's a very shameful period of history where we had a McCarthyist fear of anything other, anything different, anything that was an outside threat that could be linked with communism because of the Cambridge spies and, and real threats. Part of the reason that fostered was fostered, I feel, in 
the world of academia and, and homosexual academia, academia at that, was because those words were so, worlds were so closeted because they weren't, they weren't allowed. So everything became clandestine. It was an appalling equation. And it came out of an intolerance way before the communist threat became a real thing with the Cambridge spies. So um, really toxic period of our history. And uh, you know, I hope this um, points out what an extraordinary man he was for that cause and, and for computing as well as being a war hero. Well, it's a good place to end it because Thank this you. film is a wonderful way of rehabilitating his, his reputation. I hope so, yeah, I hope so. Or just not even rehabilitate, doesn't he rehabilitate, but just making it more, more widely known, I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thank you.